All right, here's demonstration number three. I'm starting initially with a two liter bottle full of water with an exception of, it's hard to see, but I have a pipette inside here and it has a weight on the bottom. That's all that is, is to keep the hole in the pipette facing down. And it might be difficult to see, but there is some air, there's an air pocket in that pipette big enough obviously that it's going to make it float to the top because it's at the top. So here's the before, my two liter bottle full of water with my pipette with some air pocket in it floating at the top. Now here comes my after. I'm going to squeeze the bottle and as I squeeze the bottle, okay, something's happening to that air pocket and I'll make it really evident down here, okay, I'm gonna squeeze really hard now. There we go, did you see it? I'm gonna let go a little, now I'm squeezing a little, letting go a little, okay. So the after is me squeezing it, and it's down here at the bottom, okay. So what am I doing by squeezing it? Well, I'm changing the pressure. What's changing inside that pipette that's causing it to float or sink as a side reaction. Well, that is, I'm obviously changing the volume of that air pocket in there. The more I squeeze, the smaller it becomes. So here's your after with the pipette at the bottom with the air pocket much smaller than it was before as I am squeezing, putting higher pressure on it. So the pressure arrows need to be rather large. All right. So I'm doing this all at room temperature. Temperature is not changing in my experiment. So we're holding temperature constant. I'm changing the pressure by squeezing it and we are wondering what's happening. You should have noticed by visual inspection here, should have noticed what's happened to the volume of the gas. So you can put your fulcrum here and figure out as the pressure increased what happened to the volume. As if I let go and the pressure decreases, what happens to the volume? So there you go. That was demonstration number three. So now that we have a representation of our before, we're going to use the left column of the tic-tac-toe board as the before. I'm going to make a change. So we're going to go before and then later we'll talk about what change I caused and what its effects are. That's why we have three columns going on. And we have six examples today. That's why you're going to have a front and back three, or three rows each side, total of six. I have my balloons in a bell jar. Bell jar is connected to a pump. The pump is going to remove the air from the bell jar. In removing air, like on Mars, what else are we removing? Pressure. Pressure. So I'm going to make the pressure where less? Am I removing it from inside the balloons? The Just the outside. That's where the pressure is being removed from. So watch what happens to the balloons in response. So I removed the pressure from around the outside of the balloons and this is the effect we got. Now let's draw this to see what actually happened. Alright, so today's lab we were looking at Boyle's Law which is the relationship between pressure and volume. And we've shown you guys a couple of real world examples of what happens to the volume when we change the pressure and what happens to the pressure when we change the volume. I wanted you guys to see this at a particle level. So I have a particle simulator here. I'm gonna go ahead and pump in a little bit of gas. And we're gonna give that just a moment to kind of spread out, take up the whole container. While we do that, let's talk over here. 
I'm going to put a ruler on our little box, our container. So if you look down here, it's going to tell you how big our container is. Our container right now is 10 nanometers wide, okay? If you look up here at the pressure gauge, we're kind of fluctuating between 5.8 and 6.2 um, because, remember, pressure is a measure of the number of collisions against the walls of the container. And so as the particles are colliding with the, the container, the pressure gauge is measuring those collisions in terms of pressure. And then if we look up here at the very tippy top, we have our temperature reading. And our, you'll notice that our thermometer is already in Kelvin for us. Now, when we're looking at Boyle's law, remember that the temperature is supposed to be constant. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select to keep the temperature constant. So what I'm going to do is change the volume. Okay? Now, I want you to watch... So let's start with our collision counter. Now, if you look here, I'm going to record how many collisions happen. So it's going to count for a few, and then we're going to get our readout. There it is. So our readout was 26 total collisions in a 10 picosecond period. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this handle, and I'm going to use the handle to change the volume. Let's cut the volume in exactly half. So look at your pressure right now. We're Let's call it about six atmospheres. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull this in to five nanometers. Now you'll notice as this reaches its sort of stable place, the temperature, of course, did not change because we asked it to hold it constant, but now we are hovering at almost twice the pressure. We're at about 12 for our pressure. Okay, so by cutting the box in half, I have doubled my pressure. And this makes sense because, remember, Boyle's Law is an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down. But it's by the same amount. So if the volume of the box is going down by 2, so it's being divided by 2, then the pressure is going to be multiplied by 2. All right, so now let's check our wall collisions here. We had 26 collisions in 10 seconds before. Let's check it again. Whoa, look at that. We've almost exactly doubled the number of collisions, which should make sense because if we've doubled the pressure, that means that the number of collisions that is happening should be about double as well. All right, so that's sort of how Boyle's Law works. Now, let's try pulling it out just a little bit. Let me see if I can pull this guy out. There he was at 10. This was where we started. And our pressure is back down to that six atmospheres. Let's take this out just a little bit. I don't think I can double it, but let's see how far we can go. Ooh, I can go all the way out to 15. So that's multiplying it by half. I've multiplied our volume by half. So, I'm sorry, by one and a half, excuse me. Um, so look what that does to the pressure. We've got tons more space, and so our pressure goes way down. All right, our pressure is down to like four-ish. All right, let's look at our collisions. Okay, 31 collisions. So not bad, really. And so this is kind of what Boyle's Law is doing. And I want you to really look at um, how the particles are moving as we make these adjustments. They're all moving at relatively the same speed. Not exactly the same speed, but relatively about the same. And they are going in straight lines until they collide with something. It is a collision that causes that change in direction. Okay? Now when I change this, notice how they adjust. So let's go back to 10. We didn't really speed the particles up much because the temperature is the same. We've simply confined them to a smaller space. So because they're confined to a smaller space, that means they're going to make more collisions with the wall. And that's Boyle's Law.